now available on e-readers everywhere. From the author of the Simp Trilogy, Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, Manginas, They Look Like Men But They Act Like Ladies, and The Misadventures of Captain Sable Holcombs, Stop Simping in the Workplace. Learn what mistakes not to make with women and protect your job with Stop Simping in the Workplace. Available on e-readers everywhere. In a recent interview, President Barack Obama said that if he had to run for a third term, he would easily beat Donald Trump in an election. I would have to say that's a whole bunch of hyperbole because when I look at Barack Obama's history and his record, if he ran against a Donald Trump, I don't think he would stand a chance because when we look at election 2016, Hillary Clinton was running on Barack Obama's record and trying to preserve Barack Obama's legacy, and that was one of the core reasons why she lost the 2016 election. Now, if Hillary Clinton lost an election with Barack Obama's record, I don't think Barack Obama would fare well trying to defend his own record against Donald Trump. There were just too many cards that he has pretty much laid out a hand that Donald Trump could easily play to win, in spite of all that Donald Trump said in his rhetoric. He would easily be able to pick up any card from Barack Obama's own hand and use against him. Because we look at Barack Obama's record so far, he had alienated a lot of groups in America. Not just white males, but he was starting to lose his black base. Because a lot of black people were really getting tired of Barack Obama, especially black men. Now, we see all these black men, such as Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, um, Freddie Gray, um, Keith Scott, and many others murdered by police officers. And Barack Obama's response to those murders of black men by, by people like George Zimmerman and white police officers was total indifference towards black men. So, how does Barack Obama think he's going to maintain a voting base with black men in the face of that type of situation. That's an opportunity I believe a Donald Trump would have easily capitalized on and taken advantage of, because he partially took advantage of it when he said, what do you have to lose? Because he probably saw the situation with the black community and how it was feeling alienated by Democrats. You don't think Donald Trump would have taken advantage of that? That was a big hole in Barack Obama's so-called legacy right there. And that was something that if Donald Trump had to run against Barack Obama, he would have easily taken advantage of and used to his advantage. Not only would he have taken advantage of that hole, he would have also been able to take an advantage of beating up Barack Obama on his own Obamacare. Because all Barack Obama has to show for his Obamacare program is a $16,000 bill. Many health care providers abandoning it and little phones like these. This is all he has to show for the legacy of the Affordable Care Act, which may, is now literally unaffordable for your average American. Again, another position that Donald Trump would have been able to hammer home on your Barack Obama fairly easily because now he's not dealing with Hillary Clinton, who was an intermediary in the situation. He's taking it straight to this guy, showing him how his idealistic health care plan is fundamentally flawed and how people told him back in 2009 it was fundamentally flawed. So if he's running for this third term, hypothetically, up against Donald Trump, he's going to have to try to defend his own fundamentally flawed health care program, which pretty much is becoming unaffordable for health care providers and Americans and is clearly flawed. Then he has to go out here and defend his own foreign policy which we clearly see is a hot mess. When we look at Barack Obama's foreign policy, he says he killed bin Laden, which was just a bullet point on a resume, but what he didn't understand was that terrorism is a hydra, and that just as you cut off the head of an al-Qaeda, an ISIL forms, and that's what happened in the Middle East. We've gone from Iraq um, and Afghanistan, we've gone from Iraq to Iraq, Syria, and all these other countries becoming destabilized because the U.S. foreign policy has become a complete disaster. And, again, he was beating up on Hillary Clinton on this, and it would be easy to beat up on Barack Obama just as much because 
your Barack Obama is going to have to stand there and defend his own positions. Then there's jobs in the economy, the issue that Americans said was a number one priority. And this is another position that Donald Trump would pretty much be able to beat up on Barack Obama head on because, again, he doesn't have anybody to hide behind like he did with this Clinton-Trump election 2016. So we're going to have Barack Obama standing up on a stage talking about jobs in the economy. And Donald Trump, again, is going to be able to go here and talk about the anemic economic growth of America over the last eight years under him. Moreover, he's going to be able to talk about his inability and ineffectiveness to lead during a crisis such as the Great Recession. Because he's going to be able to bring up the point in 2009 how he let the House and the Senate go on a two-week vacation instead of signing that unemployment benefits extension. And how that one moment in history pretty much defined him as a weak and ineffective leader. Because instead of taking charge of a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate and showing how he was going to lead them and set the tone for hope and change, he let everyone go on vacation and then leave 20 million Americans like myself stranded for two weeks wondering how we were going to make ends meet. Again, this was a defining moment of his presidency, and this would be an opportunity that Donald Trump would be able to take straight head on to him. Now, a lot of black people and a lot of American people think that he would have, Barack Obama would have assets like Michelle Obama and many others to help him in a third-term campaign. But again, I don't see this ha being effective to him because... Again, when we look at Barack Obama's record as President of the United States, it's not a strong record to stand on. He was not a very good leader. He was not very competent. He did not do a good job as President of the United States. And we look at his record again and his, and his history, you know, he was more concerned with bullet points on a resume than taking care of the needs of the American people. And then you had Hillary Clinton talking about she was going to prefer, preserve this legacy and it's clear to me that most Americans were tired of Barack Obama and his policies. And his statements pretty much show how much hubris he has for him to go out here and say that if he was running for a third term, he would easily beat Donald Trump. But when we look at his legacy, he promised hope and change for Americans, but Americans never got that hope and change. And that's why they wanted to make a serious change by voting for Donald Trump. They were frustrated. They were angry. They were tired. And... Slowly, over the last couple of years, he had been losing many solid voter blocks. We looked at the 2008 election to the 2012 election. He lost the white male block. And then later on, he was starting to lose the Hispanic block and even parts of the black male block. And I look at this demographically, and if we, looked, if we did a 2016 election between Barack Obama and Donald Trump, I don't think he would have won a third term because I think people... Clearly, we're getting tired of Barack Obama. They were getting tired of promises of hope and change and seeing nothing but anemic growth. Because we look at the American economy, and his Obamacare has pretty much choked the life out of the American economy to the point where all we're getting these days are part-time jobs because employers just can't afford to hire full-time people because they are mandated by the government to give them health care. And because they are mandated to give them health care, they can't afford to hire people full-time and then we have health care providers saying that they can't afford this Affordable Care Act, which soon will balloon to $16,000 per person. And most people saying they just can't afford it. But your Barack Obama thinks he did a good job, that he changed things, and that things are going in the country in the right direction. But when we look at the country, why were so many people wanting to go on Donald Trump's bandwagon? The reason why they were going on it, because they were frustrated that no change came to them even though he promised hope and change to everybody eight years ago, most American people aren't feeling it. They feel disconnected from their country. They feel that they're not being represented. And they feel that America isn't great for them. And that was one of the reasons why I believe if Barack Obama ran for a third term, he would find out learning the hard way that Hillary Clinton learned that most people are just tired of the Obama administration, the Obama policies, and the promises of hope and change that did not deliver any hope or any change for anyone. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.